In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural ice material in Blender. And in this video, I'm going to be creating two different versions of the ice material, one for the cycles render engine, which is a bit more realistic, and then also another one for the EV render engine, because I know a lot of people do like to use EV because it's in real time and it renders faster. So I'll also be creating a version of this procedural ice in Blender EV. Now, if you do want to create this in Blender EV, then first create the one in cycle because it is very similar but then at the very end I will just be showing you how to change this material up so that it works better in Blender EV because the process for using transparency and that kind of stuff is a little bit different in Blender EV. If you'd like to help support me and this channel then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and you also get access to my procedural materials if you join my Patreon page. And another great way to help support the channel is by purchasing my Blender procedural material packs. So I create packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. Links in the description where you can purchase my procedural material packs on my Gumroad store. And that's a great way to help support me and this channel. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. The links are in the description. All right, so real quick, let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So I pressed Shift A and I went right down here and added an icosphere and then when you add the icosphere I just turned the subdivisions up to like a six so that it is pretty subdivided and then I also just shaded this object smooth so I have a nice smooth sphere here to preview the material on and then I also modeled this very basic ice cubes so this is just kind of like an ice block or an ice cube and then for the modifiers on this object I added a bevel modifier just to kind of bevel the edges and then I also added in a subdivision surface just to kind of smooth it out now for the lighting right over here on the world I added in this Simon's Town Rocks 1k HDR and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com so link is in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using and using a nice HDRI is really helpful for creating this ice to look nice because this ice is transparent and so it's going to reflect a lot of the light and you're kind of going to be able to see the colors from the background because it is transparent so I think this HDRI is really nice now now you can see that if I press one on the numpad to go to front view, this is actually the front view, but I actually just rotated everything over so that we have these nice colors of like the ocean and the sky in the background. And also the light here, the sunlight kind of goes through the ice. So we're actually looking at it from the back. And so the sunlight is going to shine through that and it makes the ice look really nice. And then I also added this plane here and this plane just has a blank principled BSDF with a pure white color. And why I added this in is to get some nice bright reflections because the ice does look a lot nicer if it has some nice bright reflections uh, to make it brighter. So that's how I set up my blend file if you wanna set it up the same way that I have. And then also if you click right over here on the render properties, I'm gonna go down here and open up the film tab and I'm gonna check mark the transparent button just so that I can't see the HDRI. All right, and then one more thing before we get started, I am going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial. So if you don't have that enabled, you can just click right here on edit and then open up the preferences. And then over there on the add-ons tab, you can just search for the Node Wrangler and then just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So I'm just going to click on new here to add a new material in the shader editor and I can just call this procedural ice. All right, so to start off, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture and let's just drop the noise texture right here. Now, using the feature from the Node Wrangler, if you hold down the Control and Shift key, you can then select different nodes and that is going to preview the node. And then I'm also gonna click right here and I'm gonna drag this material and drop it on this object as well. All right, so now we are previewing the noise texture on these objects. Now, with the noise texture selected, I'm gonna press Control T and that is gonna add the texture Texture coordinate and mapping. Now I don't need the mapping, so I'm just going to click on it and then press X to delete it. And then I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates place the texture on the object more evenly. So I'm going to put the object into the vector on the noise texture. And then for the scale here on the noise texture, I'm just going to change this to like a four so that it is a bit smaller. And then I do want it to be pretty detailed. So I'm going to turn the detail all the way to the max, which is 15. Now, why I'm creating this noise texture is because I want there to be a little bit of difference in the roughness. So I'm going to take the factor now 
and I'm going to put that into the roughness of the principled. And that way, some parts are going to be a little bit more rough and other parts will be a little bit more shiny. So let's just control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview it. Now this totally isn't looking like ice right now. So let's make it look a lot more like ice. So what I'm going to do is turn this transmission value all the way up to one. And that way it's going to look a lot more like glass or ice. So the transmission value is going to make it transparent. And then right here on this IOR value, I'm going to be changing this value to a 1.31. So a 1.31. And I think that helps to make it look a little bit more like ice. Now, if the ice is looking kind of dark or if it's not allowing light to come through, there's a few reasons why that might be. One reason is that you might be using Blender EV. Blender EV works a little bit differently with transparency. So that's why I'm creating a separate part in this video on how to create the ice for Blender EV. But for this part, we're going to be using cycles. Now, if it's still looking kind of off or if it's looking a little bit dark, that might be because of the light paths. So click right here on the render properties and we're going to open up the light paths tab right here. So there's some different light paths settings and the main one is this transmission value. So you can see if I turn this transmission value all the way to zero that is telling Blender not to use any of the transparency and it does actually render a little bit faster but that's not going to work with a material like this which has transparency. So just make sure this is turned up. It's going to need to be at least turned up to like a value of two and then also make sure the total is turned up at least to that value as well. I'm going to turn the transmission up to like an eight. And also something to note is that when there are more and more layers of transparency, you're going to need to turn the transparency up more, or you're going to need to turn the transmission up more. And also just make sure the diffuse and glossy are turned up a little bit as well, because if they are turned down, you can see it's looking kind of black. So just make sure these are turned up a little bit. All right, let's go back to the procedural material. Now, right now it's kind of looking like some sort of like frosted glass or something. It's very rough and we're not actually able to see very well through that ice. And that is because of this roughness value. So if I unplug the noise texture and then take the roughness and turn it all the way down, now you can like see through it really well, but I do want some parts to be a little bit more rough and some parts to be a little bit more reflective or see-through. So I'm going to take the factor from the noise texture and put that back into the roughness. So I want to adjust the colors in here to adjust the contrast of that. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a color ramp and then let's just drop the color ramp right in here and that'll automatically connect it up. So I can now start to drag these values closer together and you can see it's going to be more contrasty. So I'm going to drag the white tab kind of to about here and then I'm also going to drag the black tab closer. So we are basically making this texture more contrasty. If you control shift and select the noise texture, you can see this is how it is right now. But then if you control shift and select the color ramp, you can see it's much more contrasty. So I can control shift and select the principled BSDF and you can see now some parts are rough, but then other parts are more see-through. Now I actually want to make everything just a little bit more rough. So I'm going to click on the black tab right here and I'm going to make this a bit of a whiter color. And you can see as I start to turn it up, it is going to be more rough. And if you want to use the exact same hex value that I'm using, the exact same color, then you can click over on the hex value and you can type in 525252. Five, five, so that is the exact color that I'm going to be using. All right. Now I also want to use this noise texture here to give it a little bit of bump just to make the surface a little bit bumpy. So I'm going to take the factor and I'm going to plug that into the normal right there. Now we need to convert this to normal data because this is black and white data. The factor here, it's black and white data, but this needs to be normal data because you can see there is a purple dot there. So I need a node in here to convert this. So let's press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to add a bump node. So a bump node will convert color data or black and white data into normal data. So we're going to drop the bump node right here and then we actually want to plug the factor into the height value. So now you can see we've converted it to normal data and so it looks really bumpy. Now that is way too strong and so I want to make it much less strong. So I'm going to turn the strength value here down to just like a 0.2, just like a 0.2 and now you can see that is looking a lot better. But I don't want the ice to be bumpy all over, I just want it to be bumpy in some parts here and there. So what I'm going to do is take this color ramp, I'm going to select the color ramp and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and we're going to drop it right in 
in here between the factor and the bump. So drop it right in there. And now you can see that if I take this value right here and I'm gonna make it fully black, it is now more contrasty because we are pushing these together. And so you can see, especially if you drag this around, you can see that it's only bumpy in some areas. So I'm gonna put this black tab kind of about here. And then I'm also gonna click on this white tab right here, click on the color. And I'm gonna make this a bit more of a gray color because I want it to be a bit less bumpy. You can see if I turn this all the way to black, now it doesn't really look bumpy at all. But if I turn it up, then it is very bumpy. So I'm gonna bring this down a bit just so that those bumpy parts are a little bit less bumpy. And if you wanna use the exact same color that I'm using, then you can go over to the hex value and I'm gonna be using a hex value of six times six, so six, six times. Now, something else that I wanna do to make it look just a little bit more like ice is I wanna make it just slightly blue. So I'm gonna go over here to the base color on the principled. I'm gonna click right here on this color and I'm gonna make it fully white. And then I'm also just gonna bring it over just a tiny bit so it's just slightly more blue. It should be pretty subtle because if you make it a very strong blue color, then it just doesn't look realistic. I do just think it looks a bit nicer if it's just a very subtle blue color. And again, if you wanna use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can punch in a value of D7 E9 FF. So just a very light blue. All right, so this is looking pretty cool, but I do just want to add a tiny, tiny little bit of noise or a little bit of bump all over the material. So what I'm going to do is actually click on this noise texture and I'm going to press Control Shift D. So instead of pressing Shift D, I'm going to press Control Shift D and that is going to duplicate the texture, but it's going to keep everything plugged up to that texture. Now, why I'm duplicating this is because I want to turn the roughness value up on this noise texture to make the detail more fine. So I'm going to control shift and select this noise texture. You can see that's how it is. Now I'm going to turn the scale down to just like a one. So just turn it down to a one. And then on the roughness here, I want to turn this up and I actually want to turn it up to a value of 0.8. So now that I've turned that up, if you zoom in there, you can see there's a bunch of very little fine detail. And so now I want to plug this into the normal as well. So I'm going to click on this bump node and I'm going to press shift D. So shift D will duplicate it. And I'm going to drop it right in here after this bump node. So the normal can just go through the normal, but we now have this extra height value that we can add data into. So what I'm going to do is take the factor and I'm going to plug the factor into the height value of this bump. And then I'm going to control shift and select the final material. So just control shift, select the principal BSDF. Now, if you zoom in here, you can see it's definitely doing something. It's adding a bunch of little noise there and a bunch of little bits of detail, but it's actually a bit too strong and I do want it to be pretty subtle. So on this strength value, I'm going to turn this way down to like a 0 0.06. So pretty small, but now if I kind of zoom in here, let's just wait for this to load up and wait for the D noise to take effect. You can see there's just a bunch of little noise Noise. you can especially see it right there and so it does just add a bit more realism and just add a little bit of bump there to that ice and that is it so that is the finished procedural material for cycles but now for everyone who wants to create this material in blender eevee i'm going to be changing up the material a little bit now so that it works better for blender eevee all right so to get this to work in blender eevee we first obviously need to change the render engine to blender eevee so now it's loaded up but you can see in blender eevee it looks quite a bit different it definitely doesn't look as realistic and you can see there's also some issues here where there's some little white spots and the reflections don't look that good and there's also no transparency so I'm going to show you how to fix all of this now so first just a few settings we can do right here to make Eevee look more realistic so what we can do is we can turn on this ambient occlusion and then we can also turn on this screen space reflections and then when you open up the screen space reflections I'm also going to click on this refraction button that is very important as well all right so now to get the transparency to work I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a mix shader. Let's click on the mix shader and I'm going to drop it right down here right before the material output. So I'm now going to press shift A. Let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for the transparent BSDF. Add the transparent BSDF right here above the principled. And then I'm going to take the principled and I'm going to put that into the bottom shader and then the transparent shader is going to go into the top one. So now we are mixing transparency with the principled. 
Now you can see that the transparency still isn't working. So there is a setting that we need to change in Blender EV to get the transparency to work. So what you're gonna do is click right over here on the material properties, and then I'm gonna scroll down here and open up the settings tab. Now right here on the blend mode and the shadow mode, I'm gonna click on these. Right now they're set to opaque, and I'm gonna change these to alpha hashed. I find alpha hashed to be the best ones. And so this is telling the material to use the transparency. So now if you look around here, you can see there's definitely some transparency, especially if you go inside there, you can see the transparency is definitely working because you're able to see through those objects. Now, if I turn the factor value all the way to zero, it's using all the transparency, so you're not able to see it at all. But if I drag the factor all the way to one, you can see it's not using any transparency. So instead of using a factor value, I just want to tell it where it's going to be transparent. And that is where this color ramp comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually unplug the color ramp from the roughness. So just unplug it from the roughness here because you can see the roughness is really making the texture look quite weird. It's making it look very white. It's giving it these white patches. So if I unplug that now, that is looking much better. And instead, I'm going to take the color from this color ramp and I'm going to plug that into the mix shader factor. All right, so that's looking a little bit better, but I still need to play around with some of these values because some of these spots are like super transparent and they're kind of disappearing. So what I can do is I can actually drag this value back. I can kind of bring this back. I'm just gonna bring it back to about here. And then I'm also going to make this a lighter color. And if you wanna use the exact same value that I'm using, then over here on the hex value, you can type in a hex value of 727272. So that's much better. Now nothing is fully transparent, but there are some parts which are more transparent. And then in Blender EV, you are able to see the texture a bit better. So on the noise texture right here, I'm gonna just do some things to make the noise texture look better. So I'm gonna turn the scale value right here on the top noise texture down to just like a three. I think that looks a little bit better. And then I do want to adjust the bump just to make it look a little bit better in Blender EV because EV does act a little bit differently. So I'm actually gonna take this gray tab right here before the bump and I'm gonna drag it over, just drag that over a little bit. And then I also want it to be a bit more bumpy. So I'm gonna turn the strength value right here to just like a 0.3. I think that looks a little bit better in Blender EV. But then if I zoom in here, you can see all that little bit of noise is very grainy and I think it's a bit too strong. So on the second bump here, this second bump controls all that little grainy detail. So on the second bump here, I'm going to turn the strength value down to like a 0.2. 02 instead of a 0 0.06 and now you're able to see through that better and then if I didn't mention it earlier make sure this roughness value is turned all the way to zero so that it is very reflective and you can see through it better and then one more setting you can turn on to make it look a bit more realistic right back over here if you go to the material properties and go down here to the settings right underneath the alpha hashed we can turn on the screen space refraction and you can see the difference if I turn that on it's going to reflect a lot more of the light and that is looking much better so you can see here it is off and then here it is on and then I do also just want to add a bit more light in Blender Eevee to brighten it up a little bit so it, here in the 3d space I'm gonna press shift a I'm gonna go right down here to light and then I'm going to add an area light and then I can just press G to grab just kind of bring it up here I'll also press S to scale and I'm going to scale that up a bit and then I'm going to double tap the R key and just kind of rotate this over a little bit and I'm actually going to rotate it kind of over here just kind of bring it over here so it's kind of pointed at the cube from the back and then you can see that it's not actually doing that much and that's because it's not very bright. So if you select the area light and then click right over here to the object data properties, you can turn up the power and I'm actually gonna turn the power up really big to like 10,000. So 10 and then after 10, hit three zeros and then hit enter. And I can also double tap the R key just to kind of rotate that around and just kind of rotate it to a position that looks good to you. But we now have that nice bright light reflecting off of the ice. And I think that looks a bit better in Blender EV. And there we have it. So there is the EV version of this material. Now, when you're rendering both of these materials, both the EV version and the cycles version, there can be quite a bit of noise, um, especially because there's all this light going through. And so to make this look a little bit nicer is after I render the images I go right over here to the compositing tab and then you're just going to click on use nodes to use the compositing nodes and you should get a render layers and a composite and so what I did is I just added this denoise here so I just added the denoise and then what you can do is you can just plug the image up to the denoise and then you can plug the image up to the final composite and so when you render this it's going to denoise the image and kind of get away a little bit of that noise and just make it look a bit nicer so there we go there's both the EV version and the cycles version 
of this material. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you found the tutorial helpful. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and all of my patrons over on my Patreon page also get access to my procedural materials. And another great way to help support the channel is by checking out my Blender procedural material packs. Again, I'll have the link for those packs in the description. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my different procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and thank you for watching.